Hey, how you doing? My name is Ryan, and today I have the chance to build a real-life version of my LEGO idea submission, the Art Kit. Now, up until this point, the Art Kit has only existed in studio and in photo real renders, and while those renders do look quite nice, I think I can gleam a lot more out of the set by building it for real. Not only can I try out the features I had designed, but I kind of get a chance to quality control the set, find ways to improve it, because let's be honest, there's always room for improvement. Currently, the art kit is 1,041 pieces, with 96 of those being the paint in form of 1x1 round tiles. With no numbered bags, it might take me a little bit longer to build this set than normal. However, I do want to use this chance to try out Studio's page design feature, where I can lay out instruction pages that look exactly like an actual LEGO set. So with that, let's get building! first part of the set is done, the poseable model. Now, if I'm being honest, considering that this is probably the biggest and most complex build of the entire set, if this was a real LEGO set, I think this would be built last, but in my instructions, they were built first. And as for the model itself, I'm very happy with how this translated from studio to real life. I think the proportions turned out really well, from the torso and the head and the arms and the legs. The base, I'm very happy with. There were a couple of changes I made immediately while building, however. First was to extend the length of the neck in order to allow for more head mobility. Second was to replace the 2x1 round plates on the shoulder with 1x1 round studs. I think they look better that way. And third was to elongate the pole that goes from the base up to the stomach because it didn't actually fit in real life. It fit in studio, but not in real life. And that's one of the reasons you need to quality control your sets. Now, the more I play with this mannequin, the more flaws I might find, but for right now, I'm very happy with how this translated from studio to real life. So let's build the rest of the set. So the rest of the art kit is done, and I have a lot of thoughts, but most of them are very good. I'll start small with the pencils and paintbrushes. I think the pencil might be one of my favorite parts in this set. It has the right scale to it, it looks like a pencil, it feels like a pencil, and I really love using the rubber hose as the eraser bit. It's a nice touch. This feels right, and it would have been hard to get that in a studio model without building it for real. 
The paintbrushes, on the other hand, needed a bit of tweaking. I had to replace the gray Technic connectors with the black ones, because the gray ones were a bit too loose and made these paintbrushes a bit too flimsy. Once I made the replacement, however, they're nice and sturdy and they look great. The Eraser is a deviously simple build that turned out phenomenal. I'm honestly quite happy with how just a couple of bricks can make a shape that is instantly recognizable. I think perhaps a sticker on the 2x4 plate would look really nice here. The paintbrush and pencil case I was relatively happy with. I think the look is what I wanted, but the functionality I think lacks a little bit. The string that I added, which goes between the two ends of the display case, isn't as taut as I'd imagine. So when you put all the pencils and paintbrushes in their respective slots, they kind of flop all over the place and can fall over. They can't slide forward though, which is good, which means they can't fall out, but I kind of want them to stay vertical. I think I might need to redesign the bottom half of this carrying case so that just a smaller, more tight fit for the pencil and paintbrushes. As for the look though, I'm quite happy with it. I love my little insignia logo I added to every piece of the art kit. And I do quite love the back with all the extra bristles and a spot for the eraser to stick right on. Now there is a second place the eraser can go and that is the art palette slash carrying case. The top part being sort of your typical art palette, but it also acts as the lid for a carrying case for all of your one by one round tile dots that act as the paint. The look of this actually I wasn't entirely sure about in studio because I didn't know how the orange brown would turn out. In the model it kind of looks like a puke color, but in reality it has that nice sort of colored textured wood to it, which makes me very happy. I love all the little paint splotches that I add to this, again my little insignia. The only thing I would change with this is kind of the structure of the lid. When you press down the lid totally onto the container, I added a little notch where you can lift up and peel the lid off. But because of how it's designed, sometimes some of the corners of the lid get stuck to the mounting points of the carrying case. I think what I might do to improve this lid is add a layer of plating below it to keep all these corners more secure. I think by adding that extra layer of plating, the lid might just be a bit more sturdy and won't lift off extra pieces. Next piece to review and improve is the easel. Now I was pretty nervous to build this and see if it works because in studio, I couldn't get all three feet on the ground, nor could I see if it actually stands up with weight on it. But in real life, I'm pretty happy with this. I did have to replace this little Technic link arm with a different one just to make a more sturdy connection. I also am worried about the way that my bar clamps from one pole to the next and that it's not exactly a sound fit. It kind of goes at an angle. It's not clean. I'd want it to be clean if all possible and I wonder if there's a better way to do that. Maybe if I replaced that bar with a piece that already has an angle on it. You know what? I have an idea. If I use one of the new clear minifigure posing stands perhaps I can get it just at the right angle so that the bar is straight. That is exactly what I want it to look like. Okay, that's actually a really cool fix. Saves me some pieces and is a really unique use of the minifigure posing stand. Now, one of the other things I want to adjust is the back leg because I think it's too tall. I can't really have it stretched that far back. I might replace this longer Technic bar with, let's go with a mid-sized one. So maybe when it's kind of leaned back more, it'll look cleaner. Uh, however, in doing that, I do need to lose the black string because it's just not long enough to reach from the back bar to the front. The idea was that it kind of acts as a stop point so you can't push it farther back. But I think these Technic bulbs at the top have enough friction that it's not gonna slide around. But the main question is, how will it hold up my 16 by 16 canvas? That holds up pretty well. I think we're not losing any shape on it. It's not bending, contorting, and I think this is one of those elements that I probably over-designed because on the canvas already, there is a clip plate that's used to attach the canvas into the picture frame. So why am I having attached studs to the canvas but clip to the frame when I can just go clip to both? I think that looks cleaner, is sturdier, and does the job just well. Sometimes I over-design things to look cool, but in this case, function beats form. 
And that leaves us with the picture frame, which on first glance, I'm very happy with how this turned out. So what you do is you take your canvas, you slide it right in, clips, and closes. And there you have a framed picture. However, there is a small gap on the top of the frame where some of the canvas is visible. I had to kind of play around with keeping this edge, this top edge, as round as possible so that it could actually fit when you fold it down. However, I think I might be able to tweak that bar to make none of the canvas edge visible. So if I just pull off some of these curved pieces. And close. Nice, look at that. All brown, no lining visible and no canvas visible. Okay, now that every piece of the art kit has been critiqued and or improved upon, only one thing left to do and that's try this out. Let's make some art. We've posed the model, made some art, and framed our masterpiece. I think this art kit is overall a really big success. There were some improvements to be made, I think there's still more to come, but at the end of the day, I'm very happy with how this translated from studio to render to real life. And if you like the way this set turned out, be sure to vote for the art kit on LEGO Ideas linked below. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.